Hello. So today I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite films that we'll watch this year, which is In the Mood for Love. Um, so this is a film by Wong Kar Wai, who we're going to talk about in just a second. But before we get to him, I want to talk about framing again. So we talked about framing last time. So refresh yourself, pause here if you want to talk about what framing is and what it, what its purpose is or can be. So we talked a little bit just about framing aesthetically and visually, but now I want to talk about framing and how framing can create meaning and tone and emotion uh, in a film or in a shot. So how can framing be used to create symbolic meaning? So go ahead and pause me here real quick, and I want you to talk as a class about how we can use framing to create symbolic meaning. And then when you're done, we'll keep on going. So pause. Okay. Uh, I hope you had a good talk. Uh, hopefully you talked a little bit about how it can show characters in their struggles uh, or things like that. Um, for example, we see a character here looking through a window. She might feel trapped, secluded, um, etc. So <laughs> I want you to look at this shot from American cinematic masterpiece, Twilight. And I want you to uh, consider the framing here. Who is being framed by what? Where are we supposed to be looking? Um, and what is the uh, director or cinematographer trying to show you about that point of focus? So pause me. Okay, uh, hopefully you said that the director is trying to get you to look at Edward. Uh, they definitely are. Bella is just kind of staring off in the distance. So even though Bella is the larger figure here and she's kind of more prominent, Edward is where the director wants you to look, um, especially because he has these wings here that are framing him. Um, and so these wings, some of you might have said it's to look like an angel. Some of you might have said it's to look like a predator <laughs> because these are owl wings. Um, but yeah, depends on your interpretation there, I guess. Uh, what about this? This is a blurry motion shot, but uh, this is pretty obvious, hopefully, where the director wants you to look. But I want you to talk about what the director is trying to, to say to you or convey. Go ahead and pause me. Okay, so obviously big old American flag <laughs> is, is making you look at Spider-Man, who's framed against it. And director's trying to, I don't know, say Spider-Man's a patriot, man. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead and look at this shot and the composition. So what do you, what's the tone of this shot? What is the director trying to convey? Where is the director trying to get you to look? All right, hopefully you pause me, sorry. Pause now if you didn't. Okay, so I'd say the director is trying to get you to look here at Philip Seymour Hoffman because he's the one doing something. Um, you know, again, Joaquin Phoenix is in the foreground, but um, Philip Seymour Hoffman is back here. He's more lit. His face isn't in shadow as much. His, you can see Joaquin Phoenix's body is largely in shadow. Uh, so you can also use shadows to create framing or other people. Okay, here's framing with um, Orson Welles from Citizen Kane. So what are they trying to convey? Okay, hopefully you pause me. Um, so here I'd say that uh, they're trying to convey, or hopefully you talked about, trying to make Kane seem like this big, larger-than-life figure. Obviously, he's either in the news or involved with the news. I mean, I know the plot. <laughs> hopefully you guys remember he had uh, film one. What about this one? What's the director trying... What is the, fig the main point of focus, and what is the director trying to say? Go ahead and pause me. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you guys talked about how desolate it looks, how they're emphasizing the uh, child in the uh, frame there, just off center, and um, how it feels really hopeless or uh, something like that. What about this one? What's the, what kind of mood is the director trying to create here? And what's the point of focus? Okay, hopefully you pause me. Um, obviously the point of focus is the young man here, Dustin Hoffman's character. And we have a uh, sexy lady leg that's framing him. So the director is trying to create a sort of flirty and fun, um, maybe a seduction, something like that. Uh, but it's a very fun shot, right? Uh, Dustin Hoffman looks very pleased <laughs> at the situation. And the director is trying to emphasize that and create a, a fun sort of frame here. All right, what about this infamous shot from Joker? What is the director trying to emphasize with his framing here? All right, uh, I'm sure you guys had a lot of different answers. We've got uh, a third of the 
shot is taken up by these stairs, which is really interesting. And then behind him, we have uh, this big gray sky and this gray background. So obviously, Joker's being framed. He's the point of focus. Excuse me, because he's surrounded by all of this gray city. Um, but yeah, maybe freedom or maybe a sense of freedom amid this concrete sort of prison. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what you guys said. Okay, so we're going to talk about Wong Kar Wai. So Wong Kar Wai is a Chinese director. Um, he grew up in Hong Kong, which is going to be relevant to this film. And Wong Kar Wai's big thing as an auteur is that he's really improvisational. So oftentimes his films will have partial or unfinished scripts that he'll collaborate with the actors on. Um, and part of his, uh, and sometimes he'll even have no scripts for part of it and will want to do improvisational filmmaking. Um, which is fun, but I would say uh, for early films for you guys, um, definitely not something you want to do. Uh, improvisational filmmaking is hard. It usually makes the shoots way longer, um, and it's much easier to have stuff prepared. Um, Wong Kar Wai has a really strong personal style and uh, likes to emphasize uh, beautiful or striking visuals. Um, you'll definitely see what I mean in In the Mood for Love, which has so many gorgeous uh, layered and textured shots um, that just feel like paintings, like Renaissance paintings. Um, the first film he made, Chung uh, Chungking Express, made him sort of an indie darling. Quentin Tarantino pushed for him over here in the States. And that came out in 1994. And then later his film In the Mood for Love is now considered a modern classic. So something that we're going to talk about with this film, uh, we're just going to introduce it now, but we're going to get really deep into it later, is this uh, concept of mise en scène. So that is how you pronounce this. Say it out loud, mise en scène. It is not mise en scène. It is not mise en, mise en, en scène. I don't know. I want you to say mise en scène. So mise en scène is a phrase, it's French, and it comes from uh, theater, actually. So in theater, it means placement on stage or how things are placed on stage. So that can refer to scenery, uh, props, etc. It just means how they create uh, meaning by the placement of things on stage. That also includes lighting, etc. So mise-en-scene, it basically refers to film's visual presentation and what story um, that tells. So this can refer to, mise-en-scene can refer to a film uh, overall and it can refer to a director's sort of style. So like for a director like um, Edgar Wright, for example, you might say he has a very kinetic mise-en-scene, um, but it can also refer to individual shots. And so things that you're gonna think about when you're considering uh, mise-en-scene are set design, costumes, camera angles, lighting, basically everything that you're looking at, how people are staged in relation to each other, uh, whether they're closer to the camera or back, there's so many things to think about. Okay, so In the Mood for Love came out in 2000 and was shot in Hong Kong. Um, and it was actually shot over 15 months, which uh, is a remarkably long time. So most films are shot over like three months or so. Um, and this took over a year uh, because it was so improvised. So the script, as I mentioned, was incomplete. Um, Wong Kar Wai worked with the main actors. Um, to kind of tell the story and figure out what story they wanted to tell. He had important story beats written out, um, but that's kind of uh, how he figured out what the story was, um, which does create, it means that this is a piece that is very slow and contemplative, and it focuses a lot on the characters. It's not necessarily something that has a big, fast, interesting, moving story. It's much more about the people at the center of the story. Um, so Wong Kar Wai is a very meticulous director. He frequently reshot uh, key moments and scenes in different locations um, until he was satisfied. Um, and he was super obsessed with historical accuracy because Wong Kar Wai was actually shooting where he grew up, Hong Kong, um, and in the time period that he grew up. So this film takes place in the 1960s. 
Um, the Chinese title is actually um, called The Flowery Years, or Flowery Years, which I find really fascinating in terms of creating, uh, I think it lends a lot more meaning to this instead of In the Mood for Love, um, because Flowery Years is actually an idiom in Chinese that is sort of a metaphor for how time, youth, beauty, etc., all of these things um, you know, are fleeting. We only have a short time where we're young, beautiful, where love comes to us easily, etc. So as with uh, Scott Pilgrim, as we're watching this film, I don't want you to focus on the romantic plot so much. All of these films uh, do have romantic plots, but they also have plots about love that are um, deeper or uh, outside of that. So we are going to enjoy Wong Kar Wai's contemplative masterpiece, In the Mood for Love.